Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Amma ba'd Faqad qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kalamihi al-majid wa fi furqanihi al-hamid Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis-sabri wa-salah Inna Allah ma'as sabirin Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-azim وَنَفَعَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِالْآيَاتِ وَالذِّكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, we send the peace, blessings, and salutations, salat and salam upon Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, now we have developed ourselves following the steps that we have gone over, such as practicing for the month of Ramadan, by fasting in the month of Sha'ban, by increasing our prayers, our salat, by building a better connection towards the Qur'an, by also realizing and taking on board the difference between being forgiven and being freed from the fire of Jahannam. And as that was mentioned in our last clip, in our last video, that being freed from the fire of Jahannam is at a higher rank and higher stage than merely being forgiven. And just to summarize, that being forgiven can also mean that we go back to the previous way that we were, back into sinning, back into displeasing Allah. But being freed from the fire of Jahannam guarantees our future relief as well. That once we rectify, once we change, once we make that changing point, that we don't go back to the previous way that we were. So in essence, asking Allah to allow us to be freed and relieved from the fire of Jahannam means that, Ya Allah, allow me to make a change that not only gets my sins forgiven, but also prevents me from going back to the sin again. This is the essence and the message behind being freed from the fire of Jahannam. In today's session, another quality that we want to focus on, each and every one of us, and it is a very, very important, essential, necessary quality that we all need to have, not only for the month of Ramadan, but all throughout our life, all throughout the year. Now, what is this quality that's so important and so amazing? It is the quality of sabr, of patience. Now, why is this so important for Ramadan as well? Because all other qualities revolve around patience. Now, how does this work, sabr? So, during the month of Ramadan, when we abstain from sunrise to sunset, from fajr till maghrib, from eating, drinking, and all other prohibitions that the sharia, the Islamic uh, rulings have applied on us, to be able to take everything on board with a full hoping heart of reward, it can only be done through patience. Let's think about this. Imagine when I follow a command, I follow an order given by someone to me. Now there's two ways of going about it. One is that I listen but I don't like. Another is, I listen, but I love it. Now, what happens when I listen, but I don't like what is being said? How can I change that into something positive? That I listen, and instead of not liking it, that I end up loving it. The quality that bridges the gap between the two is patience. Now, patience doesn't mean just to have everything inside us bottling up until we can't hold back and then everything explodes in front of us. That is not patience. Patience is to work on a quality, to work on a quality that develops into a better quality without exploding in the first place. This is patience. Now patience, as we've previously heard many times, the Prophet ﷺ has given an amazing quote, an amazing hadith, which personally I would say is the most practical in 
our scenario, our life, which is man tasabbara sabbarahullah. Remember that you and I might try to be patient, but sometimes we're not able to. But it is that trying effort which matters. So man tasabbara, whoever tries their best to attain patience, man tasabbara, whoever tries patience, sabbarahullah. Allah Azza wa Jal grants them patience. Remember, patience is not a quality that you and I can easily get. It is a gift. Now, not everyone has it. So for those who don't, what should we do? We should follow ways that Allah then grants us patience. And this is one of those ways. Man tasabbara sabbarahullah. Whoever tries patience, whoever tries to be patient, Allah will allow them to be patient. Allah will grant them patience. Subhanallah. Now, there are two types of patience that I really wanted to discuss today. One is the normal type of patience that we always hear about, which is when a problem and a calamity happens, when we go through difficulty and hardship, or even when we feel like committing a sin. So anything negative, we are patient and steadfast and abstain from it. We stay away from sinning. We stay away, holding back. That is a type of patience. But there's also a whole different type of patience that we normally tend to overlook as well, which is that the patience alal ita'a, patience on being good. Now, many times we follow our five daily salat, we sit down to read the Quran. But what keeps us going on? What keeps us motivated? What helps us to stay on track? Another quality is patience. Because to be able to fulfill the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala dawa continuously, regularly, on a daily basis, it requires an ultimate patience, an ultimate level of patience. This is is also a key patience that many of us overlook. Or we have it, but we take it for granted. We take it very lightly. This is a quality. This is something amazing. For many of us who find it very easy, we have developed it. Praise Allah. Thank Allah. Make dua that Allah grants us much more of this patience. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make each and every one of us successful in this life and the rest. أقول ما تسمعون سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته